Okay, so I'm taking apart a Drift Ghost XL camera because it's got some sort of battery problem. Um, I'm not sure at this point exactly what's causing it, but when I plug in the camera to charge, if the camera is off, it comes up with a red charging screen and it draws 150 milliamps and it, the battery doesn't charge up. When I plug it in when it is switched on, then it will also show that it's charging, but it never gets above three bars of charge and the battery life is consequently very, very poor. I contacted Drift's support about this and they didn't reply. So I've taken it upon myself to try and have a look and see what's going on. So the first thing to do in the disassembly is to use a PH0 Phillips head screwdriver to remove the eight screws that are on the casing. And once you get in there, you've got your case off really nice and easy that. The speaker is connected by this red and black wire here. They're not easy to disconnect. It's soldered onto the board. So I've chosen to leave them for the time being. So future me here recording a voiceover. It's worth mentioning at this point that having the speaker and the case connected for the duration of the repair was a serious headache. And I think I would have been better off at this point to have carefully extracted the speaker from the black casing and then the very fragile wires are much less likely to break. Something else worth considering is using hot glue to protect the connection between the speaker and the circuit board at both ends because the wire is so fragile that it is very prone to breaking and the hot glue will prevent this from happening. And you will see your battery. Now I've already started this disassembly and taken mine out and I've already soldered some extra long wires onto it to work with it. When it's in here originally, it's all folded up nice and neatly and plugged in with this little connector. So what I've done is I've used a small tool to unplug the connector from the white connector plug here. And then I've used a scalpel to cut the Kapton tape and unfold the circuit. And when I did this, the battery lead has three connections on it, a positive, a negative, and an NTC thermistor with 10 kilo ohm value at room temperature. What I would like to do is try and see if I can directly solder to the positive and negative of the USB lead and then wire that directly up to the battery so that we can bypass any intelligent charging that's going on inside of the camera. Um, because yeah, I, I suspect that what's happening is that the camera is cutting off the charging for some reason. One thing we could do to check that is to plug in the battery. So the little metal connector points are going to face up. So 0.47 amps, 470 milliamps being provided to this. And this was the behavior that I saw in the past. So let's now check the voltage being provided to the battery. Is that visible on camera? No. So the current from the charger has dropped. It's now not really providing anything to the battery. Yeah, there we go. And it's just decided that it's going to stop charging. So I don't know what the problem is with the charging circuit. There we go. So that must be charging again. Yep. Drawing the full 470 milliamps and the voltage just popped back up. At this point, what I needed was for somebody to tell me that there are two batteries inside one of these cameras. And the other one is on the other side of the circuit board and the circuit board needs to be removed to access it. So I spent quite a long time trying to troubleshoot why the amount of charge going in didn't match with the amount of voltage raise in the single battery. 
these two batteries are in parallel, so anything that you do to one, you'll also do to the other. And that means you can get away without needing to remove any of the circuit boards. And I strongly recommend that because there's a few places where there are very inconvenient wires and obviously the whole thing is quite fragile. What I decided to do, because I had taken all of the circuit board out, was connect a wire to the 5 volt pin of the USB port and take that underneath the heat sink, the interference shield, so that I would have 5 volt power in that area. You could potentially find another component that has over 4.2 volts in the area of the battery connector and use that for the same purpose and again to avoid having to pull out the whole circuit board I would certainly recommend that. I then took that 5 volt connection and wired it up to a 5 volt lithium charging board that I got online and I was then able to use that to charge, connect that directly to the tabs of the battery and use that to charge the battery and not interrupt any of the other circuitry that was going on inside of the camera. There's just about enough space if you pick a really small board to be able to fit that in there without any particular issues. I mean it was a real pain but it is possible. If you're comfortable doing micro soldering and working at this kind of scale then I would expect you would have no problem in doing this. Obviously it would take a while, it's a real pain but hopefully you'll at least skip the challenges that I had trying to figure out that there was two batteries inside. In the end, I never actually identified what the problem was. Drift never replied to my emails, so they were no help at all. And I decided it was easier just to put in this extra board because there was space for it. So what I did was I wired that five volt connection to the board, put the positive lead of the battery to the positive battery terminal on that board and then I just used a ground point on the circuit board to connect up the ground rather than having to go to the negative terminal of the battery. They're both at the same voltage internally anyway. I hope this was helpful. Please feel free to send me a message if you have any questions and good luck. <laughs>